Prestige are not your average pawnbrokers. We'll look at almost anything of value. Handbags, fine wine, art, antiques, jewellery, watches, cars. And in affluent Surrey, there's no shortage of clients wanting to pawn their luxury goods to get hold of desperately needed cash. Hoping it's worth at least 20,000. <gasps> it's an unpredictable business. Wait. Come on. This is absolutely amazing. Ten fighter jets. That has its ups. That is gorgeous. It's something actually like the Queen would wear. And its downs. These aren't diamonds. <laughs> Could potentially cost us hundreds of thousands of pounds. And with stakes this high, Ta -da! there's just one big question. You're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. We're rich! How valuable are your valuables? It smells like money. Welcome to the world of posh porn. <laughs>and home to a pawn shop run by millionaire James Constantino. Pawnbroking is a challenging business. There's always someone trying to stitch you up. Oh, don't, it, don't, it stinks. I'm not being funny. Someone has been sleeping rough in that. <laughs> you know, we all have our thing. I mean, I love motorbikes and Patch likes handbags. Good morning, Prestige. I've got a good team behind me. They're a quirky bunch. We're like one big happy family. Bullshit level. <laughs> Death come fine. But at the end of the day, we're all dedicated to pawnbroking. No, you, you get excited? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. It's P A W N, not P O R N. Well, since the recession started, I mean, a high percentage of our clients are rich clients. I mean, these people have got houses that we would all die for. Six, seven, eight bedrooms. You've got more land than probably covers most of Surrey. They've got everything that you'd want, but except for cash, and that's where we step in. Mother of four, Ingrid from Cobham is typical of a new breed of client coming through the pawn shop's doors. With a detached house worth one and a half million pounds, she's far from asset poor. <laughs> there are six bedrooms in the house. There's one bedroom in there. There's another bedroom there. There's two further bedrooms over here and a bathroom. There's another bedroom there, another bedroom over there, and a last bedroom on this way here. I live in a nice house, but I wouldn't call myself rich. Thank you, go. But as she looks to turn a lifelong passion into a profitable business, she needs a way to raise funds. I've had horses all my life. Ponies, horses. Yeah, I can't live without a horse, actually. Can't live without a horse. <laughs> Up to now, it's been a hobby, um, but I'm hoping to turn it into a business. The idea is actually buy horses from Ireland and then bring them on and sell them. There you go. You're spoiled. That's my dream, make money out of horses. That would be fantastic. To finance her dream, Ingrid plans to pawn an old family heirloom. Right, what do you think about this? It's fairly bling, isn't it? <laughs> she has an antique necklace set with over 200 stones. I'm hoping to get about £40,000 for it. That's what I would like. I, I don't actually have a clue how much it's worth. It's beautiful, but it's way too much for me to wear in my wellies. <laughs> Whatever their circumstances, pawnbrokers cater for people who need cash fast. 
Pawnbroking works very simply. People bring their belongings into us, we'll value them and offer them a loan, which is usually up to 70% of an item's value. Your interest is £42 per calendar month? Contracts are for seven months. We keep the item with us until the capital and interest due at the time of redemption. If the client can't pay, at the end of the term we sell the item. If you can't come and collect it, just give us a note and obviously we'll try to help you because otherwise you might lose the watch. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. As well as loaning against valuables, most high street pawnbrokers also double up as jewellery retailers. Ingrid's bringing her antique necklace into the pawn shop to be valued. A job for new girl Monica. I'm just wondering if you'd have a look at my um, necklace and okay. have it valued, please. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Yes, it is. How old is it? Do you know roughly? Well, it belonged to my nan. I wouldn't really know, but about 1960s, I would say. Well, it's very nice. The yes. old cut diamond. Um, there is one little tiny stone missing. Okay. Uh, if you could leave it with us for a couple of days, okay. we will get the best offers. That would be really lovely, thank you. It looks amazing. <laughs> thank Thanks, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. She really liked it, I think. So that's why it's made me more excited. Because she, uh, when, I opened the, when she opened the box, um, the look on her face, she did really like it. Jo, are you free? Do you love me? For yeah. Christmas? Yeah. This is for sale. No, not just for Christmas. <gasps> oh, wow. Bloody hell. Blimey, isn't it? <gasps> oh, my God, that is gorgeous. Sit in it, isn't it? <laughs> that is so Blimey. Lovely. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Um, you know who would wear that? Who? The grandma in Downton Abbey. Yes! <laughs> it's really nice seeing Monica excited because um, she's quite studious and she's quite straight. Look at that! She's really, really perked up at looking at that, which is brilliant. She's smiling from ear to ear. Ta-da! It's really easy to get overexcited about an item, and I always tell everyone not to get too passionate about them because it could mar your judgement. Most pawn shops will lend against any legal item of value. Carl, it's James here from Prestige Pawn Brokers. And staff at Weybridge have learnt to expect the unexpected. As far as antiques go, yeah. I've got an antique bear. Now, I'm not totally convinced that's an expensive bear, but I don't know anything about bears. I'll take it into show, show Joe. I need to put my mouth over the end of that gun. And given their reputation for loaning against the unusual and outlandish, inquiries often come from further afield. Today, James has had an inquiry from a Nigerian businessman trying to secure a multi-million pound loan against a fleet of ten fighter jets. The first email we had, Good morning, James. I called earlier in respect of acquiring a fund loan against ten units of uh, Supercat Jaguar 16 fighter jets. All in very good condition, with neat body. I aim of bringing... I can't even say it. I can't even say it. Put your back in. I aim of bringing it into the UK. I should have AVE detailed information before incurring costs of transport to the UK. It sounds uh, pretty far fetched to be honest with you, but we've got to go through with it. Joe's a bit sceptical. What's your instinct telling you? Come on. Are you My glass is always it? half full, not half empty. You know that. You're I'm an optimist. No. Joe, a good entrepreneur will always have a desire for gain over a fear for loss. I oh, know, that's why you're one and I'm not. Because no. I think it's a load of. That was bullshit! <laughs> oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Warning, warning, that's all I'm saying. James won't be handing over a seven figure sum just yet, but the offer of fighter jets has certainly caught his attention. I do get a little bit excited when it comes to big boys' toys, whether it's fighter jets, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. I'm always there first when it comes to the appraisal. Just remember it's heavy, mate, and yeah, you don't okay. want to drop it. Right, so let's go. The pawn shop is used to dealing with the weird and the wonderful. Taking a bit easy. And policeman David is looking to sell something out of the ordinary. Here it is. 
a personal yellow submarine. When my son first told me that he'd won a personal submarine, I thought he was joking. David's son Barry thought he was entering a competition to win a sandwich. Originally they said, oh, you've won a sub and a drink. So he thought, I oh, was just going to get a, a voucher for a subway. Um, and then the man on the phone said, no, you've won the submarine. I'd be amazed if this is going to hold it up. <laughs> Why don't you get in and have a look? Right. See what it's like. How do you get in here? You look like a spaceman. <laughs> Don't really make sense to me. No. But it's a nice bright colour. You wouldn't lose it, would you? <laughs> My son has now finished at university. Obviously, like most students in university, he's got substantial debts. Just really want to get rid of the submarine and get some money for him. I wish he'd won a car, really. <laughs> One, two, three, go. The competition in the magazine says it's worth about nine and a half thousand pounds. I'll take it to the pawn shop and, and see what they offer. This underwater explorer has never been used. OK, Where it's it? difficult to explain. Oh, wow. So if James is to sell it, he'll first need to check it's in working order. If we can get it in the water and try it out, that'd be fantastic. Cheers, James. Cheers. Cheers. Joe, you won't believe what I've just seen outside. What? Well, I'm going down in it next week. <laughs> the yellow submarine. <laughs> oh, you're joking. No, the guys just brought it in. Oh, my God. So, wait a minute. What do you mean you're going in it? I'll take it in the, uh, in the pool. A swimming pool? Yeah. I did think, but what if it tips over? Oh, yeah, where your head's bigger than your body. <laughs> Better ask them to balance it out with some boots. We might need a bit of ballast. <laughs> we deal in unusual items, and obviously the more unusual, the more riskier the loan. So basically, I'm putting my arse on the line when it comes to lending money against these very unusual items. So can James secure a sale of the tricky sob and help David's son pay off his student debts? A little yellow submarine. <laughs> well, I never. Pawnbroking booms in post-recession Britain, one pawn shop in Surrey is making its mark specialising in luxury goods. With over £2 million worth of Bentleys, Porsches and Ferraris, Boss James's garage would be the envy of any petrol head. These cars all belong to wealthy customers who have temporarily traded them in for cash loans. Security is tight and, like the cars, all the pawn shop's goods are kept firmly under lock and key off-site. Today, James is valuing a vintage Rolls-Royce. He will only loan against its resale value, so even luxury brands like this must be scrutinised before a deal is agreed. Seems sort of fairly straight, the upper body, but it's a little bit bubbly in places, isn't it? There's a lot of cars out there that are very shiny and they look fantastic, but once you get on your hands and knees and have a good look underneath them, it's a different story. The owner of this classic car wants to use it as collateral for a £17,000 loan. OK, Dave, I know good ones of these are around sort of 60, 70 grand for a really low mileage one. Where do you sort of see this one in the trade? What do you think? 20, 25 in the trade, I think. Inspection over, James can judge how much he's willing to lend. To restore them or to, um, to work on them is absolutely a fortune, so we need to just be careful. We're happy to uh, do the 14k if that's fine for you. I'm sorry we couldn't get any more. <laughs> We've never sent money to the wrong client yet, so let's keep our fingers crossed. James seals the deal, but it's £3,000 less than the client wanted. <laughs> Post-austerity Britain, banks can still be reluctant to loan, so people from all walks of life are turning to the pawn shop. 42-year-old Marcella needs money to support her fledgling career in the music industry. Well, I describe myself as a recording artist. That's what, uh, you know, I mainly do. The writing thing, I have dabbled in the writing thing before, but to be honest with you, I never really took it that seriously. <laughs> A single mum, Marcella has a three-year-old son to support. It is my absolute whole world. 
He really is. Oh, it's in there. Come on then. Yeah. Bringing up a child, especially by yourself, it's, it's very expensive. You need money for school fees and trips and possibly university. I'm no longer a bad Marcella wants to focus on professional songwriting and needs finance to fund her first release. If you do become successful with even just one song, you can set yourself up uh, financially. Gee, yay! The singer didn't think she could get a bank loan to cover her musical endeavours, so she's decided to pawn a precious family necklace. This piece has been in the family since as long as I can remember. My granny gave this piece to my mum, and then when I left home to come and live here, my mum gave it to me. It's a beautiful necklace. Really, it's just sitting in the house. I have no clue what this, this is worth, to be honest with you. The best case scenario is that he says, it's Marcella there. Look, this is worth £20,000. <laughs> oh, I hope to hear those magic words. I want to use that money um, to provide for my, <laughs> my beautiful little one. Um, you know, it's for his future as well. That's very important. Um, you want to explain? Yeah, good. Marcella is taking her necklace to Patrick at the pawn shop's Richmond branch. Patrick is the bag man of the business, but when it's not bags, he can be a little bit nervous. Hello. Hi there. How are you? You're right. You're good, thank you. Hi. How can I help uh, you? I've got an item to show you. OK. Yeah, mm. uh, well, that's a piece, piece, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's beautiful settings, isn't it? Yeah. Right, and you're looking for a loan on this? Yes. Yeah, funny. How much are you looking for, do you know? I was hoping it's worth at least 20,000. Right, OK. And oh, there's a lot of diamonds in there. So. Yeah, there is. Well, I, I might be here for hours counting these lot. Oh, well, obviously, we'll try and get you the best valuation we Lovely. can. Come on, little one, say bye. Bye-bye. See you, bye. bye. I'll well, have to say, that is a beautiful piece. So hopefully she'll get, you know, what she's looking for on that. Bait your breath a little bit because I really don't know what the piece is worth. So just have to hope for the best. Inside I'm a little bit excited, but mm. we'll wait and see. <laughs> but will the necklace be worth enough to secure the £20,000 loan she needs? Okay. It's the start of another week at the pawn shop, and James is following up an inquiry from a Nigerian businessman looking to pawn some military fighter jets. I'm wondering if you can help me. He's speaking to their London embassy. From our point of view, we can't. We must check this out thoroughly. If no, okay. What's your What's the email? O B I double N A at gmail dot com. Gmail account for Nigerian embassy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <sighs> gmail account for the Nigerian embassy. Apparently. Um, a bit odd, isn't it? I thought it'd be like more <laughs> governmental type email. It's like both phoning the English embassy up somewhere and them saying at hotmail.com. Okay. All right, well, anyway, he says it sounds very odd to me, basically. Mm. He said it doesn't sound quite right. He said the information I received was that this is seeming more and more like a hoax. Let, they've told me that basically they don't dispose of their military hardware in this fashion um, through pawnbrokers in Surrey. Um, <laughs> surprisingly enough, I don't know why. Maybe they should. I was looking quite hopeful at one point, I must admit. James's dream of adding Nigerian military hardware to his pawn shop's portfolio has been dashed. But closer to home, another unusual and potentially lucrative find has been unearthed. People have in their houses valuable things they didn't even know they had, and they could be worth something. I think there's a ladder outside. 26-year-old credit controller Michael lives with his single mum, Flora, in Bracknell. Oh, full of cobwebs. <laughs> right now, I'm the man of the house, so everything that has to be done, generally, I have to do it. When your dad isn't around and your mom is doing everything, it's, it's tough for her, it's hard for her. You tend to have to grow up really fast. Since Michael's dad left, the family have fallen on hard times. Obviously, you've got debts. Everyone's got debts that they would like to pay. Um, someone's got to pay the mortgage, so <laughs> that also helps. 
Uh, so there's a long list of things. Any help we can get so, would be so appreciated. Most really. of the so problems. problems. <laughs> can you manage? Yeah. They need over £10,000 to pay off their debts, but a mysterious discovery in the loft might offer some financial hope. You know, when we first moved here, we bought the house. Uh, there's a lot of junk around. Hmm. Be careful. <laughs> As we were clearing out the actual loft, we came across this red box. We kept it right here. OK. And that is it. There you go. Okay. You got it? Handling with care. <laughs> they found what appears to be an antique scroll complete with coat of arms and royal seals. It seems like it's worth a lot of money. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be such a fancy box. I mean, it doesn't look as fancy now because it's so old. And how old do you think it is? 100 is years? Any... Recorded in the College of Arms. I have no idea what it is. It's something that's very important to someone. Mm, so we need to get it to the right yeah. person. I think the scroll could be worth about £10,000. Um, if you can find the right buyer, the right person, they'll be willing to pay about £10,000 for it. If I find out that it's worth something, I will know that, you know, I've hit the jackpot. And I'll, I'll be saying, oh, God has blessed me, you know. <laughs> oh, I see money. I see dollar signs. Well, pound signs. <laughs> we'll see what we get. With no clue as to the scroll's origin or value, Michael has turned to Lawrence at the pawn shop. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. You all right? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, looking at that, you must be Michael. Yes, it is Michael. <laughs> oh, I'm really interested to see these. Well, you don't see one of those every day. I must admit, I've never seen anything like it. You look at it first of all, you think, actually, you know, this could be worth nothing, or it could be worth thousands. And that's when the job becomes exciting to me. So we can date it roughly, because we've got GRV there. So that's George Royal V. OK. Me. Let's just hope we've got a fortune here for you. Sounds good to me. What are you going to do with it? Help our family, oh. I'd say. Oh, that's a nice so, thing. A lot of responsibility, Yeah. can I say. You've got somebody, you've got to remember, that could be losing their house or something like that, and they need the money to carry on living there. So, yeah, the money we, we lend out is very important. And I'm very aware of, you know, when we're making decisions, that we get it right. Nice to meet you, Michael. Nice I'll to speak to you too. probably next couple of days. All right. Look okay. after yourself. You too. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel pretty happy uh, with what went on in there. Uh, he seems to know his stuff, so hopefully I'll have some good news. I'll be back uh, a couple of days to pick it up. or pick up my money or cash. If you were well, look, I don't know who would be interested in this. It's like um, oh, a specialist that is so specialized that we've oh, yeah. never actually had anything like it. When we get obscure or very valuable items in, we sometimes use external valuers. We must get that process right, and if we get it wrong, it could cost us hundreds of thousands of pounds. Only a handful of British specialists deal in items like this, and Lawrence has turned to a scroll expert in London to help with the valuation. Actually, we know you. Hello there. Okay. okay. Yeah, and Let's here's the beast. Okay. Have a look. See what you're talking about. And I'm really hoping this is worth some money because the Michael we found out in his loft, and he's really the nice guy. So, what do you think? I can see what you have is a grant of arms okay. in the reign of George V, mm -hmm. from 1911 to 1936. So it's looking they, promising now. That's before <laughs> I even opened it to see. And it's typical. They're always in red colour. The Victorian ones are maroon coloured. Oh right. OK, I mean, it's a nice example. It's made of leather, yeah. nicely tooled. It's one that's probably given as a title. It's a title. It's not an honour. Uh -huh. An honour is something that's given by the country, by the state. Yeah. And you have his coat of arms here, which will be unique to this person. And the gentleman's name is the said Frederick Bill. So the crunch question. I can make you an offer on it. OK, well, brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks for Thanks for showing me. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. But will the offer on the table match the £10,000 Michael needs to help him and his mum out of debt? The pawnbroking industry is booming. In the UK, the market is now worth more than £900 million a year. Shop owner James trades at the highest end. 
Today, he's taking horse enthusiast Ingrid's diamond necklace to be valued. Monica looked at it, she's jumping up and down about it. Don't get generally that excited, but to be honest with you, that piece of jewellery, when I saw it, it was like, yeah, I did a little Michael Flatley. Um, it's something actually like the Queen would wear, you know, if she, uh, maybe not to a state banquet, but if she was popping down to the corner shop to get a pint of milk and some scratch cards and she fancied the guy worked there, she might put that on, you know. God knows how much it's worth, I don't know. Whenever expensive jewellery arrives at his shop, James turns to expert Ian Towning. Ian is one in a million. Every time I go and see him, he's glammed up to the eyeballs. He looks like Liberace, even on a Wednesday afternoon. Ian, hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? <laughs> Not bad, you all right? Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. You're all right? Yes. All right. Mm. I haven't got a clue on value, but see what you think. Oh, my God. I'm not sure of age. Wow, mm. that's incredible. What sort of figure you could a expect? Hairstone. <laughs> oh, well, Look yeah. at that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty spectacular. I think it's probably 50s or 60s. Well, the stones aren't too bad, you know. The setting, the work is pretty good. So, yeah, there's only one here with a bit, bit of a black mark in it, you know. The rest have little, little white marks. But Nothing yeah. too serious, yes. you know. If you were thinking all the stones to be absolutely perfect, mm. well, then you're talking mega money. Yeah. And it's a very saleable piece. Incredible. You lucky thing. Cheers okay. for looking at it. Thank you, madam. Thank See you. You, you take care. You Bye. take care. Ian's appraisal means James now has a more accurate idea of what Ingrid's necklace is worth. Today, Ingrid is visiting a possible site for her horse importing business. Hello, Ingrid. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I need a yard if I'm going to pursue what I want to do because I would like to have at least 15 horses, 15 youngsters. If I don't get the money that I want, that I'd like, then I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do. So the dream will be gone, really, so I do need to sell my, my lovely man's necklace. <laughs> So will she get the £40,000 needed to turn her lifelong ambition into a reality? For James, finding a buyer for a stunning piece of jewellery is straightforward, but finding one for David's quirky one-man submarine might not be so simple. Today, James is planning a safety test with the sub and has lined up a potential buyer to watch the demonstration. He seems quite keen. I think he's, he may have boats out in Spain, so um, I think it will add to his portfolio of toys. How are you doing, Mark? I'm very well, thanks. How about you? Yeah, not bad. So what are, what are your plans with it? It's my son's birthday on Friday. It's his 20, 21st. So what I'm thinking about is buying it for a surprise for him. OK. I'll get changed. Let's get it in the water and try it out. Wonderful. I look forward to seeing you in your mankini. <laughs> <laughs> the unwanted prize has never been used. Oh, James. How are you? It's all set up, isn't it? It is all set up. Three. <laughs> And it floats. Okay. Possibly go wrong. The only thing I do know is you've just got to breathe normally. Breathe normally. Breathe yeah. normally. I'm not sure I can manage that. That does it all, <laughs> that does it all for you. Good luck. Cheers. <laughs> the sub may well float, but now the pressure's on James to prove it can be operated underwater. I was a bit apprehensive at first, and I was praying to God, please, let this thing work. The buyer was there, and I didn't want to end up with egg on my face. It's a shaky start. Oh, my God! Here's needing some help. Jesus! But James soon gets the hang of things. That is amazing. What an amazing bit of kit. Look at it. It really goes. <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. I feel like bloody James Bond over here. This is unbelievable. I didn't expect this. This is, this is outrageous. I'm relieved that it's working properly and that James seems to be safe and he's enjoying what he's doing. Oh, what a wonderful bit of kit. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. Oh, my God. 
I want one of these for myself. James is sold on the unusual toy, but it's the buyer's opinion that's crucial to the deal's success. I would say it's probably the ultimate toys for the boys. If I can get the price right, I would be very, very interested in purchasing it. For James, it's straight back to the office, hoping his hands-on demonstration will help seal the deal. Hi, Joe. Hi, yeah, you're right. Yeah. How did it go? Oh, that was good. Was it good? You thought I was like a man from Atlantis under there, honestly. I had webbed hands when I came out. While you're off gallivanting in yellow submarines, we've had the phone ringing off the wall. Yeah. I've trained people at Richmond. I've driven back like a lunatic because we had a flood, and I'm now trying to catch up on the paper. Joe's not impressed with James's underwater joyride, but luckily for the business, the buyer is. I think you can get a deal done possibly around the 3,000, but he does want to move quite quickly if that was any good. I think if we tried to push him for any more, you might not be able to get him on board, but I think at three grand you could possibly do a deal. So the buyer has a potential present for his son's 21st birthday, and having negotiated a tricky good. deal, James stands to take a cut of the sale. That's good. <laughs> What I'll do is I'll hand these over and we'll get back to the next sort of 20 minutes. It's the height of another busy week at the pawn shop and it's up to PA and operations manager Joe to keep the business running smoothly. That's my new filing system. Today she's discovered a surprise on their doorstep. Unexpected construction work. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. I don't want to deal with this. What's the harm in just putting a notice in the door? Bloody, people. I mean, I just can't believe that... Look, the barrier across... That's our front door there. Oh, God. Don't mess with her when she's like this, whatever you do. Oh, hello. Um, I just want to complain, actually. We've, we're a small business in Weybridge on Queen's Road. And what is the work being done out there for? Everyone just seems to think it's no big deal and that, you know, we don't, they don't have to tell you and... But you're just saying sorry and then I'm going to now hang up the phone. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. God. Is that one of my soups? Tonight in central London, single mum Marcella is getting ready for a live performance. She's yet to learn if the value of her necklace will be enough to help launch her songwriting career. I want to be positive about my gut instinct. I mean, it feels positive, but I'm hoping that it's worth about 20,000. I'm trying to keep neutral, just wait and see what they say. I've got everything crossed. Over in the Richmond shop, Patrick is working late. Acting on a hunch, he's making a closer inspection of Marcella's necklace. There's no real hallmarks on here, and I see a stamp for 925 which tells me it's silver, it's not gold. So therefore, the diamonds probably aren't diamonds either. They wouldn't set diamonds in silver in ordinary, as far as I know. When it comes to diamonds, the fakes are incredible. Some of them, some of the technology now is amazing, and you really have to know what you're doing. And this is telling me these aren't diamonds, so I don't think it is. If she's looking for £20,000, she's going to be very disappointed. But I would think it's going to be maybe, I don't know, I'd hazard a guess, a few hundred pounds. If Patrick's suspicions are correct, Marcella's family heirloom could be worth a lot less than the £20,000 she needs. shop world, loaning against any counterfeit item could cost a business thousands of pounds. Following Patrick's worrying late night discovery, James returns to top jeweller Ian Towning. Uh, I would like it if, you know, the guys are pretty self-sufficient in terms of their appraisal, but if they've taken something in that's uh, not quite right or even fake, then I'd be unhappy about it. But uh, <laughs> let's put it that way. How are you? How are you? Very well. Yeah. 
Patrick was very unsure of him. They're definitely diamonds. Yeah, yeah. I think she's going to be highly delighted with that. So the lady wants to loan against it, basically. She wants to loan against yes. it. Yes. So you That's need to know is. what the retail value is. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I would always be cautious to give too much on these mm. things. You know? Okay. Thanks for your help, ladies. Cheers. 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 The diamonds are real, but with thousands at stake, James's headache is far from over. of a busy month at the pawn shop. And for three customers, time to find out how much their items are worth. First through the door, Ingrid. Hello, how are you? Hello. Who wants to sell the diamond necklace she inherited. She hopes it's worth the £40,000 she needs to set up her horse importing business. Hi, Ingrid. Hiya. How are you? Pleased to meet you. And you. Grab a seat. Thank you. How have you been? Really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. OK. Well, look, we've had a good look at it. I mean, it's a spectacular piece, as you probably are aware. Yeah. This looks like it was um, a one-off. I know you you had a sort of value in your head of around 40k, didn't you? Yeah. Um, well, look, to be honest with you, there's retail value you're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, no way. We have had an offer from uh, a client, a good client of ours, of 120,000. Obviously, um, there's a massive difference between uh, top retail and what you can actually achieve for it as a private individual. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fun. Yeah, so that's... Uh, oh, uh, my God. <laughs> I had no idea. That's just absolutely... Oh, wow. That's... that's I don't know what to say. I was just hoping I, that I was going to get £40,000 for it. Have you ever had it valued? By no, I've ones? never. It's just been sat in the cupboard all this time. Right, oh, so wow. it's been sat around gathering... I mean, when that's you brought it brilliant. in, the box was a little bit dusty. Yeah, it would have been, because it's been in the cupboard. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, well, my I'd, goodness, uh, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, if you accept that offer, we can get that done pretty quick. I, I do. Have, you, you'd want to take that? Yes, I do, definitely. Okay. Well, we'll get back on to him now, and uh, we can transfer funds by tomorrow, if that's OK. Oh, my you. gosh. <laughs> uh, there is a great thrill in telling someone that something's worth five times or ten times more than they anticipated, and obviously, in some of those cases, they're life changing sums. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thank Andrew. you so much. A nice Cheers. I can't believe it. It's just, I would never in my life ever imagine that I was going to get 120k. I just, it's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I'm not a greedy person. I just thought I was ever going to get about 40k for it. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? That... 120,000, that was just, well, that was good enough for me. So Ingrid leaves with an offer £80,000 more than she was expecting. In Bracknell, 26-year-old Michael is also hoping for good news. Will the scroll he found in his attic be valued at £10,000, the amount his family need to get out of debt? Best case scenario for me, £5,000, £10,000. I think that would be great. Worst case scenario, obviously, we know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now it's time to call Michael. I'm not looking forward to the call. But anyway, it's time to go ahead with it. Hello. Hello, Michael. It's Lawrence from Prestige. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? I'm uh, fine. So we've got a definitive um, answer on the item. Right, uh, OK. When you bought it in, I did think it was a little bit... Um, I wasn't sure if it was real or not. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> the good news is it is real. OK. OK, what sort of figure were you looking for? Um, I was thinking... About ten grand. <laughs> Unfortunately, right the moment you'd be looking at between 150 and 200 pounds. Uh, 
150 to 200 pounds. Yeah. And you can't go higher than that. No, I mean, he actually offered 150. And I said, you're very likeable. Could he do it a bit more? <laughs> and he actually said he'd go to 200. Right. Maximum. 200 as a maximum. Well, yeah. but is that, is that my, my mum says, is that all? She's not happy. Yeah, of course she's, of course she's not happy. She's going to come looking for you. you have <laughs> <laughs> got some more money. <laughs> 200 pounds. <laughs> but you found in the attic. That's the way of looking at it. I think I think it's 200. It's as good. We'll we'll have a big party in my house. I'll sort out the money for you, okay. and then we'll um, go from there. Excellent. Okay. Have a good evening, Michael. You too. Thank, thank you. Thanks for calling. No worries. Cheers, mate. Okay. Bye. Bye. That was disappointing. I, mean, I think he put up quite a brave face there, but I think he was very, very disappointed. I must admit, when he said 10,000, I think he fell up the chair. 200 pounds. We're rich. <laughs> We're rich. We're something. <laughs> 200 pounds, it's, uh, it's better than nothing. I'll, I'll take that. Mm. I'll take that any day. The worst part of the job, and that's so easy, is disappointing people. Um, because they've come to us for help, and you're basically saying you can't help them. That is definitely the worst part of the job. He's going to invest the 200 pounds. Invest 200 pounds, buy some shares, <laughs> five years' time, double that, and then obviously keep going from there, and then before you know it, mm. we, we'll make that million you know, we're talking about. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> In London, single mum Marcella is also waiting on vital news. She wants to pawn a necklace passed down from her grandmother. The days that I've been waiting for, uh, I'm going to find out soon how much the necklace is worth. I'm getting quite, oh, <laughs> I'm getting quite jittery about that. Yeah, since I took it in, it has been going on my head so much. Um, thinking, you know, is it worth a thousand? Is it worth twenty thousand? Is it worth more? Well, I can feel my ticket going ten to the dozen. Don't know what I'm going to do. But it's not actually worth anything. <laughs> Poor old Patrick, he was put through his paces with this one and he had his doubts about it, but uh, under closer scrutiny it was all checked out and it was fine. Patrick, hi mate, yes. Ah. Oh. Your old friend. Um, my little sleepless nights. Back in town. <laughs> it's been checked out. Yeah. Basically, it's, uh, it's the real deal. So we've got some valuations. Well, that's, um, that's good news, that is good news. You can relay the news to a client. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's Patrick from Prestige. Is that Marcella? Hi, Patrick. Yes, it is. Hello. Speaking. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I've got some news on your uh, necklace. Yep. I did actually have me a little bit worried at one point, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what were your original thoughts when you brought it in? Well, I mean, I was hoping that it was worth around 20,000. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had a look over it. Right. I was initially concerned on the class because the class actually is showing a silver. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh. uh, and that sort of alerted me to the fact that maybe the item wasn't real. Um, so I had a few sleepless nights on this one, I have to tell you, myself. Oh, my God, I OK. Really did. I really did, I really And then it's gone to the experts now. And I'm pleased to say that it's genuine, it's real. Right, OK. How do you feel? <laughs> my hands are shaking at the minute. <laughs> Sorry? Hello, I said, my hands are shaking at the oh, minute. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth uh, a lot more. Then really, you're looking to loan, really. Um, oh, my God, go on, tell yeah, me. Well, I, know you, you, um, <laughs> um, I mean, I can, I can talk about it, but the item is a, a beautiful piece. And the experts said it was a lovely piece as well. They really liked it. So it is actually value. Um, Value-wise, um, as a retail item, it's actually in excess of 120,000. Hello? <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> oh, my God, you're joking. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm being deadly serious. Um, obviously, that's a retail. Um, now, I know you're looking to get around about... You were looking for a 20,000 loan. Yep. On that. I mean, that's fine. We can do that. That's not a problem. OK. Um, if you want... I can actually give you more. I can go up to about 50,000 if you need the 50, money. 50,000. OK, then. All right, OK. Right, OK, I'm, I'm a bit shocked, but I wasn't no, expecting no, no. to say that. Take your time, have a glass of water. OK. Actually, have a nice chin. Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> Go and buy a few bottles. Yeah, get the bottles out. Yeah. I'll come oh and join God. you. <laughs> <laughs> Make up for my sleep, it's nice. Oh, my God, yeah, I haven't a few of those, actually. <laughs>
Okay, Patrick. All right. Yep. Great. Thanks, Tom. Nice talking. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Marcella. Okay. Bye. 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 You're not going to believe what it's worth. One hundred and twenty thousand. It. I've had that thing sat in my drawer for 10 years. Oh my God. Oh. So what was she like on the phone then? She was absolutely stunned. I mean, you could hear her voice trembling down the phone. And uh, <laughs> I thought she was, I was going, hello, are you there? <laughs> well, I, I, I certainly was not expecting him to come out with 120,000 120, quid. God. In the pawnbroking industry, there's highs and there's lows. And some days are very low, others are very, very high. And on those really great days when you get a really good day and you've done a nice deal, it's the best feeling in the world. Is this, you know, is it all? The possibility of getting financial security is just, you know, especially when you've got a little one.